Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, we're going to be creating a 3D Starfield effect. And we have a lot to cover in this video, so I'm just going to dive straight in and get started. Now, we need two things to create our Starfield. We're going to need a bitmap to render to, and that's going to be the display's frame buffer. So, it's going to be displayed at get frame buffer, created the getter for that off screen. You should know how to do that. And we're also going to need something called the delta, which is essentially how much time passed since we last rendered a frame. Now, here's how I'm going to do this. We're going to have a long called, I'm going to call previous time, initialized just before the while loop starts, and that'll be system.nano time. I'm also going to have a long current time, which is also equal to system.nano time, and that occurs every time we go through the while loop. And then, well, after we do our whole delta calculation, we're going to set previous time back to current time. So the idea here is every time through the loop we can do our delta calculation here, and that'll give us the amount of time since the last iteration of the while loop. So for, for delta, I'm going to say float delta, it's going to equal current time, if I can type it up, minus previous time, so that's how much time has passed. Now this is in nanoseconds, so I'm going to divide by one billion. 1 with 9 zeros, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And we could do this math as a double, just for the extra precision, since I'm dividing by a billion, and then I'm going to cast it, the whole thing to a float. And that should give us the delta. And again, the reason I'm dividing by a billion is because there's a billion nanoseconds in a second. And there, that's all we should need to do in main. So now, star 3D, class created off screen. I'm going to have a constructor for it, which I'm actually going to leave empty for now. I'll go back to that in a moment. The big function we're going to have here is a public void update and render, which is going to take in a bitmap target to render to, so that's our render target, and a float delta, which is how much time has passed since we last rendered. Now for our constructor, I'm going to take in three parameters. I'm going to take in the number of stars we want to have in our 3D star field. I'm going to have some float for the spread of the stars, how much they should be spread out in 3D space, and the speed, how fast they should be moving. And to hold these, I'm going to have five variables. I'm going to have private final, I'm going to be float, I'm going to call m spread, as will be the spread. I'm going to have another private final float, float for the speed. And I'm going to have two private final float arrays, one for, excuse me, three of these, for the stars x, y, and z position. And, oh yeah, so that's its point position in 3D space. So, unsurprisingly, m spread is going to be equal to spread, m speed is going to be equal to speed, m star x is going to be a new float array of the number of stars, and th same thing for star y and star z. So there, there's only one more thing, and that is right now our stars will all start at position 0 in 3D space, and that's not very interesting if you have a 3D star field where all the stars are in the exact same position. So I'm going to create a private void init star, which is going to take in some int index. That's going to initialize some star at some index in these arrays to a new completely random 3D position. Well, not completely random, but mostly random. So m star x, sub i. Now, what's our 3D coordinate system? The way I'm going to have this work is, ultimately, before we do our final transition into calculating the pixels, negative 1 on x is going to be the left of the screen, and 1 on x is going to be the right of the screen. Negative 1 on y is going to be the top of the screen. Wait, bottom of the screen. One of those, those two. That's how it's going to work. Negative 1 to 1 on, for the left and right of the screen. And that way it's just resolution independent. So I'm going to have float math.random. That gives us a value between 0 and 1. But we want this in the range of negative 1 to 1. So I'm going to subtract 0.5f here. And then I'm going to that'll change it to range negative 0.5 to positive 0.5. Then I'm going to multiply that by 2. And finally, I'm going to multiply this by m spread. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for y. And for z, I'm going to do almost the exact same thing. The difference is, 
The thing is, if you're at negative 1 on Z, that's behind the camera. 0 is going to be the camera's position. So, instead of subtracting 0 0.05, I'm just going to add some really small flow. And that's just so we don't have a star spawning directly on the camera. And there, so this will be in the range of almost a little more than 0 to a little more than 1. And finally, our last bit of initialization for i equals 0, i is less than num star. Well, actually, I'll do m star x dot length. You can use any of the star lengths, but I'm going to choose x just because it's one of them. And for all of them, I'm going to initialize star sub i. So every star starts off initialized to a new location. And that's the setup. That's the hard part. Thankfully, that's out of the way now. All we have to do at this point is write the update and render function that actually draws the star field. So, first off, stars typically in space. So I'm going to start off by saying target.clear with byte 0x00. I'll just clear everything to black. And I made a few mistakes. So math.random should is a function, so it should have parentheses. Used i here, so I'm just going to rename index to i, so sorry about that. And now we can go to main and test this. I'm going to create a stars 3D. I'm going to call stars, new stars 3D. And it's going to take in, oh, I'll pass in 4096, 64.0, and 20.0. Sure. I'm just passing in things. You can pass in whatever you want. And finally, I'm going to use stars update and render to target with delta. Now I should be able to build. And good, I see black. So our whole system here is working, which is good. Now I need to, all I need to do now, we've done all the big complicated setup. So good, we got the hard part done. All we need to do is, well, yeah, all we need to do here is go through every star, update its position, and then draw it to the target. So to update its position, pretty easy. How does the 3D star field effect work? Typically, stars are moving towards you. So I'm going to say m star of z sub i. And I'm going to subtract delta times m speed. Why subtract? Because 0 is where the camera is. So the closer this gets to 0, the closer it'll get to this camera, in theory. And the only thing I have to do here is just a safety check. If m star z of i is less than or equal to 0, well, then either it's behind the camera or going to do a divide by 0. So at this point, we're just going to init star i. We're going to initialize it to a new, completely random location. And yeah, so all we have, that's all the updating requires. We have it at its new position. All we have to do now is draw it. So I'm going to have int x. This is going to be the star's position in the screen space. If our screen is 0 to 800, this is some value between 0 and 800. So, well, I mean, it's 800 by 600. You know what I mean. So... Yeah. Now to do this, we're going to need to know the half width of the target, so target.getWidth over 2.0f, and half height, which is, surprise, target.getHeight over 2.0f. And to get the x, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do some math and ultimately cast to an end at the end. Now, m stars x of a bind. This should be in the range of negative 1 to 1. So what we can do here is we can multiply this by half width. If our screen is 800 pixels wide, that'll change it from eight, negative 1 to 1 to negative 400 to positive 400. Now to get it to from 0 to 800, which is what we want, all we have to do is add half width, and that'll get it 0 to 800. That's all you have to do to convert to screen space. We're going to do the exact same process for x and y. So except, of course, I'm star y and half height instead. So there. All we have to do now, there's just one more thing we have to do, and that is, if x is less than or equal to 0, or x is... wait, if x is just less than 0, sorry, or x is greater than or equal to target.getWidth, then that means it's out of range. So I'm going to do this and... or... I'm going to do the exact same check for y, except for y is going to be, of course, get height. So if this, there, that should be okay. Sure. I'm going to put this back now. 
then I'm just going to init the star. So put it at a new random location. Otherwise, it is at a valid location, so what we can do is just say, well, not, not m stuff, but just draw a pixel. So target.drawPixel at x and y are screen space coordinates. And we're going to draw byte 0 x ff and yeah, sure. We're just going to draw that for everything. So, sure. And there. Now we should have it sort of, sort of working. You'll see. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's sort of working. We've got a whole bunch of stars sprinkling in and out of existence. But as you see, something's wrong. It doesn't look 3D. It looks like we're just putting a bunch of random dots on the screen. So, why? What do we do to make everything have a sense of perspective, look like these are actually 3D dots coming towards us? I'm going to do something very simple. I'm going to take my m star x and y in our whole conversion thing, and I'm going to divide them by m star z of i. And that is all I'm going to do. Make sure you do this in parentheses, by the way. So right here, all I've done is I've divided m star x and y by z. And all of a sudden, oh, and this should be plus half height here. Sorry, that's, that was my fault. But with that, yeah, now it looks like a real 3D star field effect. It looks like there's stars in 3D space coming right at you. So what happened? Why does this division by Z magically cause us to perceive a 3D effect? Find out on the next episode of the 3D Software Rendering Tutorial. Hope you've enjoyed, hope you learned, and I'll see you then.